Welcome to Turning on the Lights, uh, Wednesday morning word edition. We hope that you are all well. As always, we will take a moment for everybody to gather, and then we will proceed. And today we're going to be talking about repentance. Repentance, and I'm going to be in the gospel according to Luke. As we get started, however, I thought that we would chat a little bit about seasons. And you know where I'm going to go for seasons. I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes 3. This has been on my mind a lot lately for personal reasons as well as for uh, general reasons in terms of what's going on in the globe today. So I want to start there with Ecclesiastes 3. I want to start by getting all of the social media in order, which is something that we have to do because that's where we are. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Megan, Mary, all kinds of different people that are there. We appreciate you tuning in. If you are tuning in on any of the other five pages, remember that I can't necessarily see your comments now, but I will. And welcome to all of our friends from the WPFG FM 91.3 Facebook page. Welcome to Wednesday Morning Word. I am so glad that you are enjoying this. I am certainly enjoying providing it. So what shall we call today? We shall call today, Turning on the Lights, exclamation point, Wednesday Morning Word and Repentance, exclamation point. How about that? Is that good stuff? And so I'm going to go over to the Facebook uh, page of WPFG and let them know. So bear with me as we all gather this morning. We're going to start in Ecclesiastes 3 and move over to Luke 15 for Wednesday morning word. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, pray. Look at this morning, right? We should be able to get outside today and do some things with... Yesterday was okay, but the wind was even fairly nasty. So, there we go. Good morning. I am now on the WPFG Facebook page. If you'd care to say something, um, you can uh, let us know that you are uh, watching. Let me... Good morning, WPFG! Exclamation point. It is Wednesday morning word, exclamation point. So there we go. Um, we are saving that now, and I'm watching all the folks who are watching there on WPFG. So there we go, my brothers and sisters. The social media, so to speak, is taken care of, so why don't we delve into some word. If you want to share this live video, no matter where you are with it, on whatever page you can share the live video right now. You can start a watch party if you want, do all of those different things. Um, that's entirely up to you. But we are going to join together. There we go. Mary, Renee, Tony, Stacy, Keith, Jeff. Um, I don't know. I can't see everybody, but there we go. So like I said, if you want to join us uh, by sharing this, you can share it and uh, share it live and all of that stuff. Good morning, Round Knob. But like I said, we are going to begin with Ecclesiastes 3. I have a <clears throat> going trip down memory lane here with Rick's Cafe in Jamaica. You may be aware of Rick's Cafe in Jamaica. It's the place where you can jump off the cliffs at your own risk. That's the only reason I really wanted to go to Rick's Cafe in Jamaica. For some reason, a couple of years ago, I needed to do that. So when we went to Jamaica, we made our way to Rick's Cafe, and I jumped off the slow one <clears throat> and the high one. Once I jumped off the low one, then, like any guy, I was shamed into jumping off the high one. And uh, I have video. I can prove all of it. But... Let me just tell you this, ouch, ouch. If you don't know what you're doing, and most people who don't, and I was sober. There's a lot of folks there at Rick's Cafe. They ain't sober, and they're up there jiving off the cliff. I just wanted to dive off the cliff, jump off the cliff. 
and you don't know what you're doing, hit the water with your arms out a little bit, your armpits act like parachutes. I thought both of my shoulders were dislocated. The pain was just unbearable the next day. But anyway, totally worth it. So that's my story of the day. Good morning, Roger. Good morning, Crystal. <clears throat> like I said, go ahead and uh, share the video if you want. But I want to read this as we, uh, and then we want to open up with prayer this morning. Um, yesterday was an interesting conversation. If you didn't, it was an interesting topic. The topic was hate and the theology, so to speak, of hate. And we barely scratched the surface. But I think maybe some folks were made aware that this is actually in the Bible. And there are, they make for some very difficult scriptures, some very difficult truth that is in the Bible. When we talk about the world hating us, us hating sin, scriptures about us hating sinners, scriptures about God hating the wicked or wickedness, evil, and God hating the wicked people. They're all there. Very interesting, very challenging, and maybe we'll get back to that a little bit tomorrow as we move forward in our word. But I do hope that it is an encouragement to you. you say, what? I hope that it is an encouragement to you. Your Bible is fascinating stuff. Fascinating. And if you believe in the word, we say this all the time, if you believe in the word, what do you mean believe in the word? You believe that the word is divinely inspired and infallible that it never fails in its intent, then you, then you get in there and you pray and you seek the Lord's guidance and you ask, why is this here, Lord? Show me. I want to know more about you and more about this. I want to grow and become the son or the daughter that you see. That's the big picture. <clears throat> I'm not a, a theologian of any sort, actually, but... I'm not the, you know, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin kind of a person. I'm like, why is this here? What are you showing me about yourself? And then through that, what are you showing me about me, about the world, about us, like all of that. And that's a fascinating way to go in because we based it on the, the old cliche, God hates the sin, but love the sinner. Or we're, we're told to hate the sin, but love the sinner. And there's very clearly some scriptures that contradict that. And so it's, it's interesting to say, okay, what's going on here? So anyway, we're not going to go down that road today. We're going to go down the road of repentance. That's what I'm working for. Oh, another little announcement while I have everybody here. Uh, we are going outside this Sunday morning. Outside this morning, this Sunday morning. I'm going to be in the front of the pavilion. Uh, and we'll have three stages, really. Three, not stages like to be on, but three stages of people, whatever your comfort level is, you can sit under the pavilion if you wish. You can bring your own chair and sit around the pavilion, carefully spaced. You can sit in your car in the parking lot and pull your car right up and be able to listen. I've got the sound system. I've got the guitar. We are going to be rocking an old school Sunday morning revival service great hymns of the church, singing, playing, preaching. It's going to be awesome. I mean, I'm so excited about it. And it looks like the weather's going to be there for us, which is why we've decided to go there. So wherever you are, comfort level. I, I, like I said, I feel certain ways about this, and I've got my own way of doing things, but that does not in any way, shape, or form mean that I disrespect the way anybody else feels about this. You want to come and sit in your car with a mask on and your windows up, feel free. And I'm not joking. You won't get a word out of me. If you want to come and sit around the tables and, and, and hold hands uh, and sing Kumbaya, we can do that too and everything in between. Right? So that's where we are here. But outside Sunday morning, come one, come all. We are going to be singing and playing and preaching. So we got tons of people now. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. I was that, That's what the guy told me, right? Keep your legs, your feet together, your toes down, and your hands in like this, right? So that's what the drunk guy told me. 
when he taught me how to cliff dive. Not the smartest on either end, right? But it, it was a thing and I just needed to do it. And I did it and I paid the price and I'm okay. Right? So there we go. Let's open up in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the time and the opportunity to be together this morning. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you and we love your word. You open up your word to us by the power of your Holy Spirit and we are just inspired learning, growing, becoming the people that you want us to be, the people that you saw when we were so carefully formed in our mother's womb. Lord, we want to be children of the Most High God. And we have sought that and you have redeemed our spirit. If there's anyone outside of the kingdom of God this morning, if there is anyone who has not been redeemed, who is listening, who is hearing the word, maybe for the first time, Lord, I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit will penetrate their heart and they will turn, repent, and walk in the way of the Lord, seeking your will, not theirs. Oh, Lord, let it happen. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys so much. Hey, Josh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Did you hear that we are having an outdoor service Sunday morning? So come and stay in your car. Come and bring your own chair. Come and sit under the pavilion. Um, it's going to be me at the end of the pavilion with the guitar and a Bible. And we are going at it. I might, I'm going to bring up some stuff about what we're going to talk about today. But listen to this. For everything there is a season... A time for every activity under the heaven, under heaven. We, we referenced this yesterday, and so naturally I went to the, uh, and I started, I, I had to spend some time in it yesterday. And there's a time, to born, a, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. So far, so good. A time to kill and a time to heal. Kill what? A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. <clears throat> There's a time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. There is a time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. There's a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Now that is comforting in the sense that we understand that life is big. Life is big. How many of you have been married for a very long time, you know, and maybe, I, we, I know that we recognize this with both of our children now who are married. Um, one uh, set well, the oldest son for like four years now, three years now, a little over. Um, and my daughter just got married in Jan in uh, December here at Churchtown. And Kelly and I are looking back at 36 years of being together. Now, how many people, you know, you, you begin to look back and you begin to look back at two and three and five year periods of your marriage. This wasn't so great. Or man, this was really a wonderful season. This was a difficult season. It lasted a year and a half. This was a very challenging season, but very rewarding. It lasted three years, right? Our children right now can't fathom that in their relationships, but we're at a point where we look back and go, whoa, life is big. <clears throat> and I don't know if Ecclesiastes, I don't think Ecclesiastes is giving us necessarily permission for all of those. Like if I... If my emotions flare, I can't say, well, look at Ecclesiastes. There is a time for me to go after that guy. Nah, nah, nah. No. I think Ecclesiastes, and we're going to read the next section. And this, I hope, is the encouragement for you. Life is big. Life is broad. A lot of things happen. And we are called to discernment for those things in the seasons of our lives. We're called to discernment through the power of God's Holy Spirit, right? So that, that's not a part necessarily of the individuals here that are reading Ecclesiastes back then, but it is a part of the individuals in the kingdom of God who are reading Ecclesiastes now. Because the New Testament church is all of those who are bound together by God's Holy Spirit. 
And so I think that when we look back on the vastness of life and the wide array of experiences, and I know that there are so many touch points right now with everything that is politically, socially, economically, spiritually going on in the world today. So many touch points right here. I just want to remind you all that life is big. Life is big, and I know that it's cliche, but God is in control. I guess the better way of saying that is life is big. God is sovereign. Submit to His will, right? And you'll feel a lot better about things because through His will, by the power of God that raised Christ from the dead that is in you, you can experience, I won't say find, because it's given to you. You can experience supernatural love that goes beyond the boundaries that we, that the world tells us, right? It's based in the truth of God, and it is a love that speaks truth regardless of situation. You can feel joy, joy that you may never have thought existed because your definition of joy was just what you could derive from the world. Love, joy, you will find peace that abides in you as He abides in you. And it is not relative to your circumstances. You will find hope. And not, well, gee, I hope someday that this happens. But the hope that comes from understanding that you are saved now for this life. And for the life to come. That's a different kind of hope, people. That's a different, like, here's the worldly worldview. We focus in. Here's God's worldview. Look at the bigness of life. Look at the bigness of this world. Look at the bigness of the experiences I have for you. I hope that that is an encouragement because I know that it's where I, I've gone. I, I want You worry about people. You worry about situations. You worry about money. You worry about jobs. You worry about how this is just hurting people. I know it, but I also know. I also know life is big all of these experiences fit in here and that God is sovereign. I got to believe, I got to trust, and, and I got to discern. Discern by the power of God's Holy Spirit what are the next words out of my mouth? What are the next actions that I'm going to undertake? Are they of God? Or are they generated from the pit that is my own old self? <clears throat> I know I'm weird, but I actually think about things like that. What do people really get for all their hard work? I've seen the burden God has placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful in its own time. We can read that as poetry and go, wow, that's really beautiful, man, and just walk on our way, but you can, or you can take it for what it says. God will make everything beautiful in its own time. Do you believe that that is true? Or is this just blah, blah, blah? Right? Is this blah, blah, blah Christianity? Oh, Lord, that's beautiful. You're such a good writer. What? What? That's poetic. Oh, it is. It's all of those things. But it is also true. Tiny little sentences in Scripture that we read can have a profound impact on how we live. This has a profound impact on how you live. As a Christian in the New Testament church. What do people really get for all their hard work? I've seen the burden God has placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. Even so, people now cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded that there is nothing to be, uh, nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. 
We should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of our labor, for these are gifts from God. Do you hear what's being said here? This Ecclesiastes 3, I was, and before we move on, I just want you to hear the blending of the natural and the supernatural that is being preached here. We move through our lives and we have no choice but to eat and drink. We have, you know, that, that we're going to try, we're going to be alive, physically alive. We are going to make homes. We are going to make families. We are going to get jobs. We are going to do all the things in the physical that people have been doing since the beginning of human beings. We're going to do all of those things. But for human beings, God has planted eternity in our hearts. And although we don't see his picture, we see a bigger picture than just the physical that is in front of our faces. We see a bigger picture than just making money. We see a bigger picture than just trying to be happy. We see a bigger picture because we're different as human beings. We're not animals. Our consciousness, our spirit, our awareness and self-awareness, our cognitive abilities, our ability to think and to reason, all different. And God has planted eternity in the human heart. So as we go through this daily life, seemingly grinding away, God wants to remind you, first of all, that daily life, it's big and a lot of things are going to happen. Secondly, you are able to view it differently than anyone who does not know God and is not experiencing the very power of God. Does that make sense? It's good stuff. It's more than just good poetry. It's good preaching. It's truth. It's truth for the Christian today. Truth for the Christian today. Right? Sovereignty, God's sovereignty. We talk a lot about that. God's sovereignty and his sovereignty as he as his word goes out by the power of his spirit, the ability to penetrate hearts. Paul preaches in Romans 10, how can people hear if nobody preaches and how can anybody preach if they don't know the word, right? All of those things, it's a, it's a cyclical event. We get the word out and that is part of that eternity that is in the human heart. And I'm telling you right now, if you open up yourself to a redeemed life, through repentance. You turn away from the life that you led and turn your eyes on Jesus and ask him about the life that he would like you to lead. You believe in Jesus Christ in what he did on the cross. You believe. You profess. You will be saved. Repentance is interesting when we talk about this as the foundation, right? Repentance is the foundation of salvation. And what do I mean by that? We've got a few minutes here. We've got about 10 minutes, maybe more. Repentance is the foundation of salvation. Salvation is not what we might term an easy believism. Oh, okay. Wow, heaven sounds awesome. Okay, I believe. Yeah. There is a choice that we make, and that choice is to intentionally turn from the way that we are now toward a holy God asking for forgiveness. That's repentance. Salvation comes to those who will repent and believe in the supernatural power of salvation that's made possible by the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ on that cross. That God did that for us so that sin could be forgiven. 
And we wear the righteousness of Christ and we are able to walk now, talk with, walks with me and he talks with me with a holy God. That's what this story is about. How is that possible? We learn through the Old Testament all these different, and then we get into the new, oh, Jesus. Repentance is the foundation of salvation. Let me share this with you. Let's go for the sh a short one here. And let's do two of them. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners, tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. That was a big deal in the culture, big deal. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. Now listen, in this, this clock ticks too loudly. Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. So we're talking about the foundation of salvation for that individual is what? Repentance. Jesus does the work. He will carry you on his shoulder. He will usher you into the kingdom of God by redeeming your spirit. All those who believe will be reborn. Not of water or from a man's will, but in spirit. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't, the, won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house? Search carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she will call in her friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. In the same way, there is joy in God's angels when even one sinner does what? Repents. Sometimes here on TOL, we talk about the church putting the cart before the horse. Remember, we talk about the church acting outside of the will of God because we're not willing to go do it the hard way, which is actually the easy way, if you may follow me. We're not willing to sit in God's will and wait on God's timing and listen to what God has to say because it may not line up with what we have a vision for, the church. And so we go off on our own and then we try to drag Jesus along saying, come and bless this. Look what I'm doing for you. Come and bless this. In the same way, what are we preaching? When we preach, do we put the cart before the horse, so to speak? Are we saying, hey, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved? Jesus is teaching us something a bit same but different. There is this rejoicing that occurs when a sinner repents, when a sinner realizes that they are a sinner. That is the first step in salvation is knowing what you're saved from. Well, I'm saved from hell. I want to go to heaven. Yes, and I'm saved from Satan who is currently in possession of my spirit. What? I want to be saved from that. I want to be saved from lusts of this world. I want to be saved from constantly seeking to fulfill the physical. I want to be saved from a narrow worldview that teaches me to hate more than it teaches me to love. I want to be saved from myself and the self-destructive things that Satan teaches me to do.
I want to repent of what I'm doing now. I want to realize that that is the old man. I do not want that Brian Warner. I want the Brian Warner that he sees. Who am I, Lord? I've turned away from that Brian Warner and I'm looking at you now. Who am I, Lord? I believe. I believe. I repent. I believe. And I submit my will to yours, Lord. From here on out, I want to journey with you. I want to know the Brian Warner that you knew when you created me in my mother's womb. I want to know that Brian Warner, Lord. Let's walk. Let's figure this out. Let's do it. I want that, Lord. Thank you. Your grace. You say, I, 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 I. But the grace of God acts differently. Lord, I see you. And I want you. He does everything to make that possible. He has done everything. He has done everything to make that possible so that I can unwrap that gift. We go on to the parable of the lost son. And we see once again the father who waits for the lost son. We see the son who repents of the way that he has behaved and turns back to the father for his inheritance. We see the other son who does everything that the father says and is in line for his inheritance, who gets very, very angry at the justness of the Lord. There we go. That's the whole gist of the conversation today. And, and the reason that I got struck is because we talk about God's sovereignty. And here I am beginning all of my sentences with I. I'm going to be doing a lot of thinking about that today. But it also strikes me that God's grace is different than other things that we know. I don't work for God's grace. I don't it's done. It is finished. It is there. But I, it's not true love if I do not turn to him of my own free will and love him. It's not a pure act if I'm coerced. And so my brain is spinning around that right now. But I'm telling you right now, my brothers and sisters, the word will help me figure that out because that's why he gave it. Don't ever come around this preacher and start telling me that God is given up on you because you haven't heard from him. God has been speaking and has not stopped speaking for thousands of years. You want to hear from God? Then stop relying on personal revelation and open his word and hear from God. I love you guys so much. I pray that you have incredible, incredible Wednesdays. Um, we're going to be back here for Bible study at 3 p.m., Romans Bible study, 3 to 4.30. If you're there with me right now on the... Uh, yes, yes, I love these comments. I can't wait to read them all. I cannot wait to read them all. Good morning, good morning. See, yes, I know, right? You look back 61 years. 
It's just fantastic stuff, right? Life is big and I want you to enjoy it. And the way that you can enjoy it is to take your eyes off of that narrow vision and open yourself up to the worldview that is given you through salvation by God's Holy Spirit. So Father God, that's what we pray for your creation today. We pray for all of those that are in the kingdom of God today that they are renewed, that your Holy Spirit is stirring. Renewed. We pray for those who are not out, that are outside of the kingdom of God today that they have heard your word of repentance. That they have know that Jesus Christ was the sacrifice for their sins. That the grace of God is available. The free gift of God. Turn and unwrap it, my brothers. Turn and unwrap it. I should say turn and unwrap it, men and women, and become my brothers and sisters in the family of God. That's my prayer for your church today, Lord. That's my prayer for all who may hear this today. Please rest. Rest in the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the good news. It is the power of God that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. And we are not ashamed. God bless you guys. Take care. Tomorrow morning, turning on the lights will be the last uh, time together for this week. And don't forget about the Sunday outdoor service this Sunday at Churchtown and what your church is doing. Feel free to put it on there, what your church might be doing. But uh, we ain't uh, slowing down. We ain't slowing down. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you guys. Take care. And we'll.